guess who's already getting started with the lower bracket, because I guess I like to try hard in all my aspects of life. <clears throat> the voice crack was perfect there. Well, this is going to be between Sanjo and Fear, and, uh... Hold up a moment. Did we see this in the group stage? Because if so, we shouldn't have. Wait, I can check this in a really quick manner. I don't think we did, though. Um... And, yeah, I've got a document here, of course, outlining the, uh, the map picks and bans, so let me read that real quick once I finish fiddling around here. No, it was Serum who was with Fear, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But anyway, the document says, so, this one's nice because it says factions, then bans, then picks, and so I know that they, I know that they did it properly, uh, because I was a little worried about people not really knowing how that system ought to work. Anyway, uh, first ban is from, well, faction de declaration from Sanjo is Soban, then Fear's Coalition. Then Sanjo bans College Teeth, Fear bans Tight End Passage. Um, Sanjo gonna pick this map, the Shallow, Fear picks Firebase, Sanjo picks Kartoba. What do I think about that? That's probably pretty good. Um, I don't know, I think I think Fear generally has gone for a bit of early aggression, hasn't he? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's true. I can't totally remember um, his games, to be honest, so I'm not totally sure. But Sanjo going for Sport Cruiser first, I mean, definitely, uh, definitely doing it right here on the Shallows. Um, I like Fear's pick of Firebase Krill just because I like Firebase Krill, but I don't I don't know if that like plays well to him or not. But you can see Sanjo banning College Teeth. I guess she really didn't want like a close up and personal map with Fear. So I guess opting instead for kind of the, the slower macro play is Sanjo, and it looks like she's definitely going to get it in this game, playing of course on uh, the shallows. And look at that carrier is properly rotated, starts moving out as the sport cruiser pops. This is gold. I'm liking it. Also worth noting, um, Sanjo's colors are black with purple, and Rompa Frolic's colors are purple with black, and uh, when they played in the Homeworld Classic tournament, it was like, well, I mean, you can't have a black ship in Homeworld Classic, so they looked exactly the same. Like, <laughs> I swear they conspired to do this. Here she is queuing up units again. Again, I really kind of wish she wouldn't do this. You can already have AV Fabrication on the way if you don't, which is really safe when you go Spore Cruiser first. AV Fabrication first off of uh, an immediate, you know, Spore Cruiser expansion, that's kind of like what I would recommend. Um, so, you know, this is a little bit unfortunate, but that's okay. What's Fear doing meanwhile? AV Fab comes out from Fear as well as four LAVs right here, but he's also getting a Spore Cruiser, so it looks like it's four LAVs into a Spore Cruiser. Um, kind of a build where you want to, you know, poke your opponent and do a little bit of damage, but I think this illustrates the reasons why I don't like it so much pretty well. Once these four LAVs come out, four LAVs were produced from Sanjo, so it's like, well, you haven't really gained too much here, have you? The thing is, uh, Fear does have this turret that can be placed. Oh no. Oh, this, this will happen sometimes. This is one of those things they should really fix about the OK, but the base runner is like, how do I get there? And so he's just not putting the turret down, which is a little bit unfortunate. When Fear realizes this, he'll probably be just a little bit tilted. Turret placement is going to come down here. The thing is, once Sandra sees it, she can throw down the targeting jammer, but... Oh, okay, I thought she already had... No, that's the salvager throwing his step pack there. By the way, Fear... Oof. Oof. With the eco. But that's okay, he's actually going to be ahead here in just a second, I believe. I salvages are there. 7 to 7, yeah, so the thing is, Sandra should probably already be ahead on, uh, on the economy here, right? But she's not, because she has not uh, gotten those guys mining just yet. Turret, by the way, taking names here. He's actually up on the high ground, and even if he did get pushed by those LEDs, these LEDs from Fear could have responded. So a logistics module gets killed, which is actually really a bitter pill for Sanjo, as well as um, three LEDs. And that turret is still up and running, about one third of its health left. Artifact can be extracted by Sanjo now. Fear gonna go for his extraction as well. Here's the score line, probably to 1 1. We'll just have to see though. More unit queuing going on here. Carrier production upgrade would be beautiful, but that's okay. <laughs> that is okay. Yeah, so the base is actually filled up first by Fear. Um, he's also got AVs coming up. Going for the LAV armor though, not the heavy vehicles armor, so. Interested to see what his plan here is, but Sanjo definitely doesn't want to sit in front of his turret. Time to smoke that AAV, I would say. Ooh. So one of them gonna go down there. And the turret does fall. 
So down goes Fear's kind of uh, stranglehold at the middle, if you will. But he actually did pick up that middle artifact, not the one closest to him, so he's actually got a really good claim to that next artifact there too. Fighter and Gunship coming out from him as Railguns come out from Sanjo. That I think is going to be pretty bad for Sanjo, I think Fear is probably going to get some really good value out of those. We'll just have to see though. I'm recording, right? Okay, good. Sandra's base runner comes up here, you're gonna get a little bit chewed up. It's just sitting there. He's, she's sticking it. Uh, Railguns and AVs coming out for Sandra. This is all good stuff, but uh, once the strike fighters hit, this could get bad. Carrier production upgrade is coming out at like almost the perfect time here for Fear. That looks like uh, really golden for him. Targeting Jammer used here kind of tried to clutch save this base runner, but I don't think that's gonna work. Because um, they can obviously just leave its influence. There's still no units here to protect, so I think this is kind of a, a waste of resources right there. Base runner does go down. Bunch of tires go spinning off into the dis. Oh, what a letdown, dude! They just sat there. I love it when the tires go spinning. If you're here, probably wanted to pick up this artifact. If you kill your unit to go there and then rally him back, uh, while he's still carrying an artifact, he won't know to pick it up, and so you'll get this kind of behavior. You're gonna wanna pick this one up, buddy. Anyway, Strike Fighter's coming out for Fear. Three of them are queued up. I know he's got that production upgrade, so it looks like his uh, Strike Fighter production is gonna be quite good. And he's got the resources to continue as well. And we could be seeing a whole bunch of dead railguns here. Um, that's always a sketchy proposition because if this is kind of the way that you're ahead, well, suddenly you're gonna fall behind again. Um, I was talking with the A game after uh, our matches in the upper bracket, and I won't spoil how any of those went here, of course, because that'll be casted a little bit later, but. He basically said, like, yeah, in, in CBC, you know, any any tech that you go for other than air is kind of going to be to your detriment at the top level. Unless you're really good at some particular strategy, but, like, almost always you need to go for air after, um, after you uh, have, like, the AAV confrontation in the beginning. <clears throat> that guy's survived with 3 HP. I wonder if that's like a thing. If you have this much armor, it will survive with 3 HP. Oh well. This is better fabrication coming out for San Jose. That's good. Um, definitely what she needs. Uh, if you just got a couple more railguns, like what he should do is try to push in here. And that, that requires taking out this railgun right here. I mean, he should still have the strike fighters flying around. Obviously, those ones had to go dock, but more can launch. Oh, well, there's only one, but still, that's good. He actually did launch it, in fact, so. Pretty good strike fighter micro there too, but the target's definitely got to be the railgun. Um, especially in vanilla, which car cups are vanilla, obviously. Uh, AEVs have just so much health that, you know, they're very tanky. It, it takes a lot of missiles. What, that guy was alive? Sandro just coming in with clutch with these, like, unkillable units, apparently. This strike fighter's kind of overstayed as well, because he's going to get taken out. In fact, there are two missile batteries there now. So the window's kind of closed now for the strike fighters to do their damage, but they've done enough, I feel. Um, and thin down those railgun numbers a little bit. I still, I feel like Fear should have a little bit more on the board, but uh, he's still in a good position here. He's only just figured out his base runner didn't have that artifact, so he's picked it up just now. But he actually should already have two artifacts scored. That's kind of okay, though. So what can be done here? Well, Sam just got the better railguns, but Fear is the better carrier. He could go for a bit of a power play if he wanted to. And he is getting power reserves up. Power reserve 1 is on the way right now. Railgun fabrication coming out at the moment. Um... That could be good. The thing is, Sanjo's actually got a head start on the railguns anyway. I guess Fear is a little slow to get railgun fabrication out, so she's definitely got more railguns um, and will have more railguns as we move forward here. Even if uh, even if Fear just starts mass producing the things, um, hmm, he's got a good hold of middle though right now, and that still hasn't taken away from him. It probably will now, but probably in time for him to extract another artifact here. I'm wondering, he doesn't have any of the damage upgrades. That's something he should really get. Um, because Heavy Vehicles 3 is coming up for Sandra now. These LEVs are just going to do a whole lot of nothing against Railguns unless they have the damage upgrades. Good smoke there on this AV. Just trying desperately to keep him alive. He's probably going to die anyway, but you might as well when you can. Uh, yeah, Heavy Vehicles 3 is coming out now. So if there's no um, like Assault Pack, uh, which means there's no damage even on the on the queue, let alone you know present, this is going to be a little tricky for Fear to deal with. 
He's got base runners that can set down turrets, I guess, but you never want to be doing that. Um... Hmm, I don't know. I feel like if Sandra just kind of pushes out here, she's actually in a really good position. Ooh, missile batteries could be deadly here, and I think they're gonna be- Oh my goodness! It's a slaughter. That's really nice to see from her. Um, I think that really kind of settles it. She's in a really dangerous position now. So this is gonna be this is gonna be tricky for Fear. He needs to respond really properly, and I'm not even sure what that means necessarily. Uh, I think strike fighters though, that's definitely not it, because there's so much anti-air here. There's like three of them. That the idea you're gonna kill them with the railguns and then come in with the strike fighters and clear this up, I don't know about that. And this coalition death blob is starting to look pretty nasty. Um, I mean it's actually a Saban death blob, which is even better, of course, because they have you know the Saban railguns. Mag accelerator is finished. Oh, this is just yeah, this is uh, looking to be really deadly here. And look at the upgrade disparity too, it's only armor 1 for fear, but Sandra's got free. I don't know, I thought it was really good from fear, like the beginning and how he got through you know, the strike fighters up at the right time and everything, but suddenly this is looking really good for Sandra. She definitely wants to deny this artifact she can though. Oh no. Yeah, uh, she's just barely non -rated. You Like, it looks like you should be, but if you look at the hill, there actually is a line of sight blocker there. That's unfortunate, gonna be in the scoreline 2-3-1, uh, but I think that's probably still okay for Sanjo. Lots of ALMs here to deny the, the counterattack, and then there's also the AVs. Obviously these don't deny it on their own, but um, they buy a lot of time, right? Sporkers are anti-air coming out, so covering herself from air backstabs as well. And I think, yeah, she really should just push in. It looks like that's what she's gonna do. And some more railguns keep coming out. Definitely ought to keep these AAVs like, on the back line, or at least pushing out on that flank or something. I like to just always keep my opponent's army in check, but... She sees the LAVs, it's pretty fortunate timing for her, so nothing gonna go wrong here, um, I should imagine. Although maybe she'll lose an ALM. You can smoke that, but I mean. Uh, I think, yeah, she's got the AVs like using control click there, which has been unfortunate, but that's okay. This carry taking a lot of damage. You can definitely use the, um, the mark target ability. Oh yeah, she is. I eat my words. That carry at about half health, that's actually really significant even if it doesn't die here because it's gonna stay at that amount of health for some time at least. Railgun's also getting hammered on now. And yeah, the railgun fight really just not going Fear's way and that's not surprising. There are a lot of numbers here and they are so Bond Rails fully upgraded. Um, I think Sandra's got it. I don't want to call it too early, but it's looking really good here. And I didn't, I didn't mention this, but if I had to suggest like what the um, what the outcome would be, I would have guessed it'd be like a 2-0. So this is actually really good for her already. Um, LEV's coming in for backstep here. Uh, she's got those mortars again, though. I'd love to see her use. Them. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. It's it's a weird thing with the mortars. They can fire like right next to themselves, and there's like no time to dodge. So it's actually not a bad strategy at all to like wait for a little bit and then pop the mortar a little bit late. Oh, <laughs> look at that bank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, go for some tertiary tech here, man. Like, you know, battle cruisers are gonna be pretty nice here. Uh, assault cruisers and artillery, that's gonna be pretty nice. If you got this much money, you might as well start because um, you never know. Like, this attack could fizzle out and then you're gonna really want to have something coming up after it. In this case, I don't think it's gonna matter, but always a good thing to do, I think. Ravens is kind of trying to chew up some LEVs right here, which to be fair, they're actually succeeding rather nicely. Uh, but yeah, there you go, they found the carrier, that's definitely the target they wanted. Like I mentioned earlier, that damage is like semi-permanent, I guess, because it's going to be really slow to heal it up. So. And this carrier should be dead, I think she can just ignore the railguns, uh, there's not enough room to stop it. I believe that is going to be GG. Nicely done for Sanjo, let me load the next replay. Now, you know, I was actually really worried like at the beginning there, but this turned out really nicely for her. Next map is Firebase, right? Yes, indeed it is. Let's head over into the replay section here. And we'll head out to Firebase Krill. Why am I not friends with fear? Anyway, I've, I've rectified that. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I can find it. Okay, here we go, here we go. 
Sorry about the delay. Game two. What does Fear need to do to get himself into this one? Um, I'm not totally sure because I was watching Sanjo mostly. His his strike fighters came out at like just the right time. They killed a bunch of railguns, so it's good, right? I think uh, maybe expanding off the back of well, no, he did actually. I don't know. I guess railgun fabrication has to be earlier, but I'm not totally sure, honestly. I will say it was clearly a good map pick for Sanjo because she seemed to know how to play the macro fight a little bit better than Fear did, um, and that turned out very nicely for her. Yeah, I don't know what he needs to do differently. Maybe just uh, pressure a little bit more with those AABs, try and clear out the railguns a little bit more uh, dedicatedly, if that makes sense, so that she can get the AABs in there and do some eco damage, but we'll have to see. We will have to see what he can do this game. LAB Fabrication comes out earlier this time for Sanjo. I'm hoping it's not going to be LAV Fabrication into SC first, because I mentioned in another video of mine, I've, I've kind of determined that I really hate that build. <laughs> I just don't think it's really good at all. Sandra with the carrier rotate too, I mean, she's, she's doing it. She's doing it. Although, oh well actually this is not particularly good, because now the carrier is really far away, obviously. Uh oh, uh oh. We're having a carrier washing machine moment. What way is she trying to orient? Right there? Orient up, right? And it is going to be LAB fabrication into SC first. Uh, uh. The, the reason I don't like it, I, I mentioned it in another video, but I'll just say it again, is that uh, you like when when you do this kind of build and then you scout like aggression coming at you, you have to cancel a support cruiser in order to um, stay afloat. Which is like terrible, like you really don't want to have to do that. You can't build any LEVs before the support cruiser starts. Um, even if you do see aggression coming, you have to cancel this thing. You don't have any tech coming, it's going to be delayed. It's just like, I don't really see what it gives you. If you just go support cruiser first, you'll have LEVs out at almost the same time. Um, in fact, it might even be a little bit faster, I'm not even sure. Uh, you'll be safer against rushes actually, paradoxically, right? Um, and you'll have your eco up faster, which is obviously just better. So I really can't see any reason to do LAV fab into support cruiser first. Um, tell, tell me if you think otherwise, but I'm pretty sure that's just not a viable build. Um, but we'll see. That's that's this man's opinion. So take it for what you will. Sandra gonna scout Fear with some LAVs coming out with his second base setup. Um, she knows what's going on there, but Fear doing the right thing this time, I think. And support cruiser first with LAVs. And again, you can see, so he had the Spark Cruiser out first, he has more LEVs out on the field. And he has AV Fabrication started first, although... To be fair, I think that's due to Sanjo's kind of, you know, like, unit queuing, uh, style. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, she didn't pick up the artifact there, which is kind of funny. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. I'm getting some weird kind of frame drops here, but hopefully that goes away in just a moment. I think it's because my hard drive is filling up, because I'm working on a big project now for YouTube, um, which I shan't tell you what it is, but it'll be pretty fantastic when it's finished. Um, and as a result, I've got like tons of videos on my on my hard drive, so it's getting a little full up there. Anyway, Fear definitely going to extract. You can see he's generally been pretty aggressive grabbing that middle artifact. Um, he is going to get that one out here. Sandra filling up her second. Fear actually has not done so yet. He's just now going to start filling it up. But uh, he was on it for a while, so I mean he does have some kind of eco boost from that, if you will. But he's finished the AV fabrication, but he hasn't made any of them just yet. What's his resources like? 490. Yeah, I mean I think fighter and gunship is probably safe here once again. Like I said last game, it's really good in CBCs. Um, or he can expand onto his next base, which is going to be pretty aggressive eco play, but it might work out for him. He's definitely got the money for it. I wonder if he's saving up for that or if he's just kind of not spending it right now. Carry production upgrade comes out. He's still got 590 stacked up there. But he still hasn't gone fighter and gunship, so I don't imagine he's planning on it. He is planning on it. Best caster 2019, but that's okay. That is okay. The thing is, uh, I think if he clicked on fighter and gunship first, like right when he had the money for it, and then gets scary production as it's on the way, they finish it like about the same time. I think that's what Descara is doing when he gets like set up nicely for uh, 
for thing, you know, for these, um, like, strike fighter plays where he builds them two at a time. So I, I think that's probably what I would do if I was Fear, but this is okay as well. Um, carrying protection upgrades finished, so he's actually getting LAV damage now, upgrading these units a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's one thing he could have done last game, was get that LAV uh, damage up, actually, because one of the reasons he was unable to deal with the uh, Strike Fighters last game, or sorry, the Railguns last game, is because he never got any damage upgrades for those LAVs, and so they were having a lot of trouble um, taking fights ever. Carrier from Fear is powered up here, I don't think this is going to go anywhere with the LAVs, but maybe they can get a kill here. Guy is getting healed, of course, by the carrier. Yeah, I know, it looks like they can get a kill here at least. Fighter and gunship finishing for fear just now. What are the resources looking? Yeah, both of them stacking quite a lot of CUs here. I mean, I think both of them could have expanded to a third base by now, honestly. And especially in CBCs, it feels like if you're not expanding really fast, you're falling behind in the game. Less so with Galzine, I guess, because the production cruiser also makes units, and so you get kind of like more complicated stuff going on there, but I feel like in CBCs, unless you're doing a two-base power play, you've got to expand to your third really fast. And two-base power plays require making a spark cruiser anyway, so... Yeah, probably by like the six-minute mark in the game, if there hasn't been this much, like, too much aggression, which in this game there really hasn't, you should be on a third base, I would say. But you can fault both players, but it's equally so. Carrier production upgrade just now finishing for Sanjo. It's kind of rough, I gotta say. Um, definitely you want to see less, you know, unit queuing and more production upgrades getting queued up, so. Those are my thoughts. Fear needs to keep making these, uh, strike fighters, though. That's for sure. That's faux shizzle. But still no strike fighters in the queue here for Fear. I think he's making a support cruiser. I believe Sanjo is as well. I think. Um, of course, uh, I'm just basing that off of how long it takes to produce, it's not the best metric, but it looks like it. Production tab has always been a little bugged out here, but... Strike Fighters are on the queue again, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Sport Cruiser comes out. Sport Cruiser has got a very unique sound to it, at least in the early game. I guess when more cruisers come out, they all kind of sound that way, but... I like the Sport Cruiser sound quite a lot. So Sanjo, is she expecting air, I wonder? That is going to be what's coming. By the way, neither player- oh, whoa, I yawned. Neither player actually moving on to that third base. Okay, yeah, Sanjo's doing it just now. Looks like Fierce as well. But the strike fighter's coming out. Now again, you don't want to dump the damage on the AVs. Definitely better to hit the railguns. Looks like that's what he's going to do. And that's good. The thing is, like, off the back of this attack, you really need to have a uh, AAVs on the field to, like, do some damage now on the eco. Just, you know, I mean, they, they have had resource floats here. They just haven't really uh, gotten enough AAVs, I feel, to do it. Or I guess you can do it with LAVs too, but because you're taking out railguns, not AAVs, it's kind of tricky. Maybe I'm seeing things a bit too from, like, a, a, a bit too much from this sort of, um, you know, established CVC meta perspective, but that's definitely how I would be doing it anyway. Support crews are going to get uh, dunked on just a little bit there as well. That's actually really nice to see because that is damage that can perhaps be capitalized on later. It's only about 500, but you never know what difference that'll make. You never know. Three missile batteries coming out from Sanjo. So she's, she's serious about this, guys. LAV damage 2 coming out now for fear. Yeah, but it looks like he definitely wants to stick with the LAV play here. Another support cruiser comes out, so he can actually unlock his carrier if he wants to. He's got two extractions, he's gonna pick up another artifact here in the middle, I think. He should, anyway. Who is knowing? Perhaps he will do something crazy now. We will have to see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Power Reserve 1 coming out, so I guess probably he wants to unlock his carrier now. That could always be exciting, it's something I like to see. Coalition Sledgehammer is pretty fun to watch, um, but I don't know, he doesn't even have railguns yet, does he? Oh, he does, now. Yeah. He, he does, he's just gotten that tech. No mag accelerator, of course, but uh, Sanjo filling up her third base right now is also being a little bit slow on it, as you can see. 
LAV gonna get dunked on right here, but that does tell Sandra the positioning of those uh, enemy units there. Probably wants to send one AV down into the back line here because she can't know it, but um, or well, rather, uh, she can know it. Um, fortunately for her, it's not happening. But if these LAVs went down around the back line there, that's a that's a really big potential weakness. And this guy probably not wanting to stand still there either. <laughs> this is a dangerous time. You cannot stand still. Um, Fear starting to produce railguns, but he's also getting battle cruiser fabrication, which is pretty exciting. We might be seeing the uh, the, the old coalition party bus. That would be fun to watch. But he still doesn't really have an answer to armored units, really. It's kind of surprising Sandra hasn't pushed out a bit more aggressively across the map because Fear really has not had any answer to it yet. These AVs trying to be annoying here, but the Strike Fighters actually can launch and kill them. I don't think they're going to, but they, they really should. That's okay, though. LAVs here trying to harass the third base, and they're actually doing pretty fine. Uh, Savon Carrier obviously not going to cut it against these, so if she needs AVs or something here. They are popping out of the carrier just now, but the LAVs can leave now as well. Although I guess with ALMs and stuff, they're going to get stunned. It's not going to be too good for them, but you know. That's A-OK, -okay, boys. Battle Cruiser Fabrication about 30 seconds out. Now I'm wondering what the resources for Fear are like. Not terribly good. I, I think at this point you should start saving up, because probably you want to queue up like two of them at the same time. They're pretty expensive units. And then you can drive your carrier in there and pop them like on your opponent, right? That's my thought anyway. Battle cruisers take like a whole minute to produce though, so... But yeah, look, there's no anti-air coverage here at all. I mean, all these units could just be dead right now if, if Fear wanted to, but... He's not launching those air units. I think uh, one thing you'll see top-level players do with air units is that they constantly have them circling around. They're looking for some kind of an opening, and once they find it, they're just like, and kill everything, and then, you know, dock again. Um, that'd be nice, because the only way to know that there's no anti-air there is to get some scouting, and strike fighters and interceptors have this huge vision range, so it's really good for scouting things out. Just food for thought, but they definitely don't have to be launching right here. Sandro coming in with a bit of a wrap around here, and I like that. Oh, but look at this. I didn't realize. Yeah, the railgun's totally getting jumped on by the LAVs here. What was really good about this is that the AVs are coming in from this side, and they're also coming in from this side, but uh, this is not good. <laughs> definitely losing all these railguns is going to be kind of catastrophic, I think, <clears throat> for Sanjo. Battle Cruiser Fabrication is finished now, and I think Fear is producing. He should really be moving his carrier out now, too, then, in that case. Uh, mortars are off this time, which is good for Fear. That, of course, perhaps cost him the game last time, honestly. Railgun's gonna get slapped down here. AVs, of course, not gonna be very effective against Railguns at all. But Fear still with this carrier kind of here in his base um, means those battle cruisers definitely gonna have a long way to go. I'd definitely be moving out across the map if I were him with that carrier. But. Battle cruiser pops for one. You can tell by the big red lights on the top. <laughs> I really like that actually because it's very distinctive. You know, you never feel like oh, nice shot. You never feel like you're gonna miss the fact that there are battle cruisers on the field because they're really noticeable units. These <coughs> oh whoa. These AVs here could be really nasty, by the way, but they're not being used currently. I mean, that could be a dead sport cruiser for all I know. Then again, actually, there is air, but it wasn't launched last time, I don't know. AVs are moving out across the field now. And Sanjo just making as many railguns as she can, but I think this is going to be kind of the, the reverse of game one. Fear you're going to push in here now um, with a bunch of railguns. He's actually going to have battle cruisers coming out too. I think he's just got the numbers and he'll probably take this, yeah. But... Launch the air! Launch it! Launch it! You bought these things for a reason! Go! Go! <laughs> oh no. I mean, this is, it's such a good thing that he's got them. For the upgrades like here. Full upgrades for Sanjo, almost full for here. Look at that mortar though, it's really good actually. A lot of this rail is on high ground. I think Sanjo's actually taking this. Oh wow, I was not really expecting that. Kind of bad focus fire comes in too. I mean, you can see they dumped a lot of damage on missile batteries there. And actually, fear just gets swatted there. Wow, I, I didn't see that coming at all. Now look how much resources he's floating, by the way. Like, he could definitely be getting heavy vehicles 3 at this point. 
Battlecruiser is about to pop on the front line. That's gonna be helpful. Another. Wait, is that an OAV? Okay, never mind. Um, but there is one Battlecruiser out there. There's a lot of railguns here for Sandra. I mean, this could go really badly for Peter as well. Battlecruiser's gotten into range though. I'd pop the smoke and then run out this way because then these guys can't shoot at you after you get out of it. Okay, smoke gets popped. He's just gotta sit there though. But this carrier probably gonna be taking names here, so this could maybe work out for fear yet. Um, but this is a lot of relevance things dealing with here. It doesn't really have the best of answers. Ooh, Battle Cruiser's just dunking on these AVs. You can see AVs actually get a surprising amount of health. They don't get killed by those Battle Cruisers nearly so fast as they should. One support cruiser has already gone down back at the home throne, which is kind of amazing. Battle cruiser goes down, but so do all the railguns from Sandro. One support cruiser already dead. It's just it's just total pandemonium here. Like I don't even know what's going on at this point, but. But I think fear is coming out on top. It looks like just everything has died, really, you know what I mean? And this is a little strange. I I'm sure Sandra had enough railguns to hold that, so I'm not sure exactly what should be wrong here, but... I don't know, dude. <laughs> so something's, something's getting tricky. I guess that's all I'll say. LAVs come streaming in here like some kind of plague. Railguns are all gonna go down now. Fierce Carrier will definitely win a fight with Sandro's, you know what I mean? Like, because he's, she's so bon, I mean, that's just, you know, that's not even fair. Um, so all that Fear needs to do is just keep these Railgun numbers down, right? And I think he's fine, but it looks like he's gonna kind of back away here instead. That's also probably justified, but I think he can probably just win the game from this position, so you might as well just do that, right? Ooh, that mortar could have been huge, but this is like two groups of LEVs that are that big, though, so I don't know. This guy is a freaking commander, dude. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, I know. It looks like Sandra definitely going to lose this one. Fear, um... Making that a little bit sloppy, but it's going to work for him. I'd definitely like to have seen him put some power into the armor here. That'd be nice. Attack bombers coming out for fear. That's a fun choice. <laughs> Ooh, pretty good, pretty good mortar barrage right there. Now, these LAVs are not going to do anything to a carrier, clearly. I think, actually, they should go and kill off this last base. Because if your opponent doesn't have any more economy, that's, you know, that's definitely game over, right? quite as well as he should be, but that's that's okay. And when Sandra rounds the bend, it's still gonna get shots off on her, right? But I mean these two are at the same speed, so this is not not great from fear obviously. He should have should have been following much more closely here, but that's okay. LABs are gonna get up on top of the support crew, that's gonna die really fast. These guys have their damage upgrades full, I think, yeah. Support cruiser goes down, uh Sandra's carrier at like one thousand health. That is probably going to be the end of Sandro. Yep, there we go. Okay, 1-1, one, one, so we get an ace match. That's always fun. Getting me on Kartoba, actually. This was uh, Sandro's pick, and again, it's a very big map. Like, I think, once again, this makes a lot of sense for her, because she's clearly a bit of a macro player. Um, and she's going to be playing on, you know, one of the biggest maps that we have in the pool. So, I like that, you know? I think that's... Uh, if I can find this, by the way. I, th I think that's really good. Uh, well. <laughs> if, if I can find the map here, I don't usually have this problem, but I've left a lot of uh, replays up in the... Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Yeah, I've left a lot of replays up in this folder, so it's, it's a little bit clogged there. I like to trim those down a lot more, but I've been a little bit lazy with it, I suppose. Oh, I'm gonna yawn.
Um, I should reiterate, in vanilla we would expect Sylvan to actually uh, reiterate, I don't think I've actually said this yet. In vanilla we would expect Sylvan to lose this matchup, by the way. Sylvan is just kind of weird, you know what I mean? Like, we, we generally think that they're kind of a weak faction in vanilla. It's just because the carrier is so important and Sylvan's carrier is so trash, you know what I mean? That they've got a lot of really good things, like the, the railguns are really tasty, you know? Really, really good to do like mid-game macro plays with Sobon, but just generally not, you know, the faction that you want to play as on vanilla. Sobon fanboy is going to come in here and tell me that's not true, but it, it is. I mean, it's just, it's tricky to justify. In 3v3, it's a little bit easier because Mass Sylvan BC is actually really good and stuff like that, but you know, I don't know. It's poor Kuzu coming out from Sanjo. Six up, looks like. That's a very respectable build there. What's Fear doing meanwhile? Fear's also going uh, SC first, but he goes 7 up. Um, this guy definitely gonna wanna, you know, get over to that base there, but it's actually not the biggest problem. It, it looks like worse than it is, because the next thing he does is get LAV Fabrication, not, you know, pop the wreck. Um, you wanna get LAV Fabrication right after the Support Cruiser starts, and so there's a bit of time yet where he's not gonna have 50 Cs to pop the wreck open. He can also launch a probe too, because that's something he wants to do at this stage. So... You know, a little bit sloppy, but it's not too bad. Support Cruiser pops out there. Nicely timed with the carrier move there too. It looks like these guys actually had to move a little bit, but I thought that it was going to get there a little faster. Um, that would have been perfect, but that's still pretty good. Probe there just casually flying, you know, through the wreck of the Kartoba. I don't know how that's even possible, but that's fine. It's a real pity that he flies through the wreck of the Kartoba, by the way, because if he didn't, what that would mean is that we would be able to use that as like a, like an element of the map. Um, but unfortunately we can't. Like, we, we, we uh, put blockers on like the Kartoba and you can drive on top of this one, but you go inside of this one, which is really wonky for the game, so. It's, it's a shame, you know, I'd like to see it otherwise, but. Because clearly the way that's working is that this one just has like height on it, and this one has a model that's uh, like a line of sight blocker. So. Oh boy though, let me tell you, if we could make our own custom maps, how things would be different. Things would be very different. AV Fabrication coming out for both players here, but I think Fear... No, that's not true. Sandra is also on her uh, second base. Wow, very comparable timings here from the two players. Oh, excuse me? Of course, Sandra going 6 up, we do expect to have a little bit slower AV fabrication. Um, that is indeed the case. If you're here going with the carrier production upgrade, of course. I hope Sandra does too, but you never know. Click it, click it, click it, click it, click it, click it. Oh! Yeah, the carrier production upgrade is what you want here. Um, especially if you're going to take an AV fight. And then Fighter and Gunship actually comes out early from Sandra, but she definitely wants carry production if you can have Fighter and Gunship fabrication on. Definitely wants that. Well, you know, I've talked about that enough. <laughs> I don't think I need to mention again why I don't think that's very good. Carry production is coming out from Sandra now. It's actually going to be timed okay with the Fighter and Gunship. Um, she's not going to lose build time on those due to this, so that's good to see. Trying to get a little bit spazzy there. I'm just trying to check what's going on across the map here. But Fear is also going to get Fighter and Gunship Fabrication. So this is looking to be a very, very meta game here. I like that. I'm generally a fan of very solid plays. Sandra mostly just leading these AVs on the uh, kind of, you know, like defensive role here. Extraction comes out for Fear, who, as usual, has picked that middle artifact up, so he's definitely uh, more of a map control player, you can tell. And I find that a bit interesting, actually, because in, in RM, of course, there are no, you know, artifacts, so... It's fun to see that he's kind of like one of the players who goes for map control, because that's obviously something he wouldn't be doing in, uh, in Remastered the same way. Fighting Gunship actually a bit more delayed from Fear than I thought. It's still, like, 20 seconds out, and Fear, uh, Sanjo has got her first two Strike Fighters finished now. 
Third one on the way. Really good fabrication coming in for two, as well as another sport cruiser. I like that. I like that a lot. Fighter and gunship finished now for fear. I imagine he'll queue some of those up. He could do some crazy like tack bombers, but I, I wouldn't though. <laughs> what are the armor upgrades looking like? They are even. So whoever gets high ground would win this fight. Um, I guess there's a bit of a high ground over there, but it's not. Oh. Oh 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 boy. <laughs> I like that, man. I like that. And actually, there's more ABs over here, too. Which is pretty cool. Sanjo with the six around, man. I'm telling you, like, boom. Anyway. Yep, fighters are getting queued up for fear now. Same with Sanjo. Interestingly, uh, one of them getting queued up on the wrong slot there. I think that's because of the Spark Cruiser. That'll happen sometimes. Micro, uh, microing the um, production queues in DOK can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Strike Fighter's launching for Sanjo now. Still not yet, but fear. Now, it's a little tricky when both players have air. You kind of want to be the guy who fires the second shot. Um, but it's not easy to guarantee that you will be, you know what I mean? Also, look how dumb this AV fight. Anyway. <laughs> that's that's a different story, though. Strike fighters can kill AVs too, but... Um, yeah, you don't want to... You don't want to fire the first shot again, like I said. This is actually going to be really good for Sanjo. Oh, boy. Attack, 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 attack. Ah, this is gonna be really bad for Sanjo. Dang, big window missed there. Because obviously, what was going on was that uh, Fear Strike Fighters came in um, piecemeal and Sanjo just came in like all at the same time. So she should have just like destroyed him there, but unfortunately, did not target those Strike Fighters properly. But then Fear like ran away for some reason. Like, he was totally winning that. He should have just um, kept up the pressure and he would have been fine. Instead, gonna lose two Strike Fighters kind of for nothing. I think fear definitely sort of fearing his opponent a little too much there. Ha 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 ha. Good fight for Fear. Got that high ground advantage. Of course, he's also focus firing, whereas Sandra is not. This guy gonna want to get back up on the dune though. He had high ground before. That was that was pretty juicy and nice. Oh. I'm missing something. Yeah, Sport Cruiser anti air is actually out. And he definitely needs to launch like launch your strike fighters now, dude. Oh, what are you doing? You, you, like, when this kind of stuff happens, you want to launch because you can potentially kill off your opponent's air force here, save a lot of damage on that Sport Cruiser, and then get really kind of definitively ahead in the game. I gotta say, generally a little bit unimpressed by Fierce Airplane. It's gonna cost him a Sport Cruiser here too if he's not careful. One more shot and it's done. Yeah, whereas he had air, like, he could have launched and then killed off his opponent's entire air force and lost, lost nothing. That would have been really good. Ooh. Ooh. That's not good, especially on an ace match, you know, you definitely are looking to win this one. Assault Cruiser Fabrication coming up from Fear Node. Interesting choice right there. Um, he definitely needs to replenish that Sport Cruiser that got taken out, of course. <coughs> It's worth noting, isn't it, that um, six strike fighters can still kill a support cruiser even when it's got the anti-air upgrade. If you're gonna build some more strike fighters, I really hope he's just gonna use them, you know, because obviously they're not gonna do too much until he does. Sandra making two more support cruisers. I wonder if she's planning on taking that fourth base. And if so, which fourth base she plans on taking, because that's actually kind of an interesting question, isn't it? Carry is very close to this one, actually. And I feel like the distance between these are kind of as far as the distance between these. Base burner goes down, which is kind of a nice pick for fear there. 
as he actually grabs two artifacts at the same time here. So I like actually that move because he's sort of manipulating the fact that it's, you know, a big map to say like, well, I can I can try to extract, you know, a little bit more aggressively then because you can't stop me as easily, which is a nice way, I think, of countering a player who likes to go macro is to kind of force them out into the middle of the field using base printers and artifact extractions and whatever. These strike fighters definitely need to dock, like, right now. Sandra kind of doing a weird thing with the strike fighters of her own, but she's still going to win this fight, I believe. Oh, but the LEDs! I didn't think about that. By the way, a gunship coming out, I saw that earlier. I, I thought that was a little strange, but... Because gunships in vanilla, you know how they are. Definitely wants to dock here. This is not the kind of place where you want to be fighting with LEDs. Gonna lose one, maybe two? Yeah, two strike fighters for the LAVs there, which is pretty sloppy, but the gunship will launch here. Now, the gunship is gonna put some real hurt onto those LAVs, but um, still, I don't know about that. I'm not sure, yeah, those red guns not in position at all here, so these AAVs are gonna do a lot of damage if they're unchecked. Sandra definitely gonna wanna fire the strike fighters over there. Gunship coming over here, he's searching for those LAVs. They are, in fact, over here, but it's hard to say. You know? Ooh, a lot of ammo getting wasted on this LED here, too. It's unfortunate to see. You hate to see it. This is also dangerous, because the Strike Fighters could just launch and kill this thing, you know what I mean? Strike Fighters are going to launch against the AVs, which is nice, but they've already taken the Sport Cruiser down to, like, half health, so... A lot of good damage being done by those Strike Fighters right there. Gunship decides to attack a Support Cruiser despite the anti-air there, but he is going to get away with it. Oh, really narrowly, though. Really narrowly. Support Cruiser is going to go down, actually. Oh no, I didn't think that was going to happen actually. I didn't think it had enough damage on it to kill it there. Sandro definitely going in for the power play now. Artillery's not been the choice for Fear, so he's got, uh, he's got assault, ship, uh, assault cruiser fabrication, but no, no assault cruisers just yet. He is going to get a lot of rail guns though, look at this. This is really good for Fear. He's got full damage upgrades, so these are going to drop fairly quickly. Strike Fighters can definitely kind of make some some noise here, but um, there's still going to be a lot of railguns going down. This, you got to imagine, is a worthwhile trade for fear. Probably about equal in resources, but not at all equal in momentum. I think that was good for him. Although, I must say, I've always been a little bit disappointed when strike uh, when Strikecraft get on top of railguns, that they just don't really kill them as fast as you would expect them to. Powers are 3 coming up for Fear. Now look, he's got 12 bits of power to put in wherever he wants to. That's kind of crazy. That has a lot of power. Sandra has replaced that sport cruiser which she lost. Still moving out here. Looks like she still wants to go for this uh, power play with the um, with the carrier. She's actually no, 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 sorry. The gunship didn't die. I thought she had rebuilt it. She want to be careful with these strike fighters, but I gotta say I really haven't been too impressed with the strike fighter play from either player just yet. I think it could be a lot more dynamic. You know what I mean? Um, a lot more based on trying to kill off your opponent's air units and you know being very safe with protecting your own, uh, but at the same time getting damage in on the field. So. Probably something they both want to work on. That Sobon Carrier looking like it wants to come in and do some kind of a power play. The tricky thing is just, you know, that it's a Sobon Carrier, so it's not going to do much damage. Strike Fighter is giving really valuable scouting here, by the way, which is nice. But I think the, the big reason why Sandra's doing this is she's been prompted to by the fact that there are all of these uh, artifacts getting extracted, and if one more gets extracted, it's game over. So, I mean, she's got to make a play for the middle. Now, the tricky thing for Fear, of course, is that he hasn't even gotten railgun fabrication, let alone made any railguns. He's making assault cruises right now. He's got a lot of power in that carrier, and that's what he's going to plan to use to kill off these railguns. Now, Sanjo wants to be back away immediately from this, because when you see the enemy carrier like that, just think, okay, well, I can get damage if I back away from him, right? And this carrier taking a lot of damage, as you can see, but... Stitching it out too, killing uh, killing a few railguns here, but it's already down to about two thirds health, so he does have to back away. This is tricky for Fear if he wants to play without railguns like this. I mean, it's it's not not easy to swing that, you know what I mean? Sanjo just making more and more railguns. Fear having to back away. 
Or maybe I'd even like put full power into armor because I think he has enough. Hold on, what is this? Like five and then three and then three, one? Yeah, yeah, so he's, sorry, I had to do some some tricky math. But no, he's got enough power to actually be full in repairs and that'll heal up his carrier a lot faster. Oh my gosh, what's happening? I, sorry, I didn't notice the strike fighter fight going on here. But yeah, it, it's a battle for the strike fighters. Um, and it looks like fear is coming out on top of it because of all the ground ants here that he's got in the area, I think. But most of Sanjos have already docked, so they're going to be safe. But, I mean, she really can't launch here. It's just it's kind of a, a toxic environment for area ants, I guess you could say. Cars are four finishes on this carrier. Soul Cruiser gets taken out. There's just still a lot of rail against here. I mean, I don't know if Fear really wants to try to push into this. Oh, you know what? No, never mind. I thought Sandra had Soul Cruiser ants here. She doesn't. <coughs> but Fear is actually losing Strike Fighters. I'm not sure what to, really. This is kind of a forlorn attack here, really. Sandra not going to want to be sending these Strike Fighters out like this. They're just getting killed here. But Fierce Carrier really low here, and again, I think putting all the power into the armor, that'd be really good, because railguns do like half damage to a carrier with full armor. Oh my gosh, yeah, you've got to power up that armor right now, Fear. You're going to die here. And you need railgun fabrication, for goodness sakes. Um. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's playing that really close to the chest there. He does power up the armor, he gets out of vision, but just barely. Gunship launches to add insult to injury, take out those LADs. He is going to get killed here though, almost certainly, because there's so much anti-air in the right here. Yeah, like, that, was, that was kind of a silly push. Burls! Yeah! This Savon carrier is still looking strong. Is there anything ridiculous going on back here? No, there's not. Oh my gosh! What's happening here? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Sancho! <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, obviously this means game over, right? I don't think that base printer can be stopped. It looks like Sanjo noticed it just about the same time that I did, so Strike Fighter's gonna get launched here, but they're not gonna be enough to deal with that base burner. Smoke gets popped, and I like that, because obviously if your opponent gets vision to this and kills it, you know, you're gonna be really sad. Oh no, Sanjo. Because she's, like, actually winning from this position really clearly, but it's, it's just, I don't know. It's too bad she did not get that artifact stopped. And this is what I was saying about Fear, by the way, like, playing against a macro player on a huge map like this, well, you know, get extracting them, because you never know what it's going to do to the game. Wow, nicely played. Well, it is going to be Fear who advances up into our lower, uh, into our lower bracket semis. Securing his, no, that's not true, because seating is different in JC2. But anyway, the point is, he did a good thing. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.